Hello and welcome to Bun Med, where we discuss concise medical knowledge that you can fit inside of a bun. In this video, we're going to be having a look at secondary hemostasis, or more commonly referred to as the dreaded clotting cascade, and hopefully seeing that it's not really that bad when we break it down. Let's have a look at secondary hemostasis. So what's our purpose here? Well, our purpose is to stabilize the plaque we've formed by forming a layer of sticky fibrin sheath over it so we can grab onto passing red cells. And what process are we going to go through to form this sheath? Well, this is something that we call a clotting cascade. The word cascade here refers to the fact there's going to be lots and lots of reactions. So let's just orient ourselves again. Here you can see in red we have the endothelium with the collagen underneath. And this clotting cascade uses these things called factors, and there are 13 factors, 1 to 13. We don't need to know the names of every single one of them, we could simply refer to them as factors. Now, in order for this cascade to uh, start, it needs to have one pathway, and in, in order for it to continue to keep going, it needs to have another pathway. So this cascade uh, consists of two pathways. So let's have a look at the thing that kickstarts the pathway. And this all starts with the activation of a factor called factor 3 also known as tissue factor. Now, factor three is activated whenever we have trauma or exposure to the collagen inside of our blood. Factor three A, the activated factor three, then converts factor seven to factor seven A. And factor seven A can now help to convert factor 10 to factor 10 A. This is where the whole reaction starts to snowball and everything converges on factor 10 because factor 10 A can then help to convert prothrombin to thrombin. Now this thing, thrombin, is going to play a major part when we talk about the uh, uh, other pathway later on, but for now, thrombin helps to convert fibrinogen, which is the precursor of fibrin, to fibrin. And the fibrin can finally help to uh, form that fibrin sheath over the platelet plug once it's formed. So the pathway we just looked at is called the extrinsic pathway. Now let's look at the intrinsic pathway, the pathway that's been happening in the background at a much slower rate. And let's see how thrombin affects this. So the intrinsic pathway starts with factor 12, and factor 12 is converted to factor 12A. Factor 12A then helps to convert factor 11 to factor 11A. You can see a pattern here where the activated factor is simply called the factor A. Factor 11A then helps to convert factor 9 to factor 9A. And finally, can factor 9A go on and again help to convert factor 10 to factor 10A? And this is done with the help of factor 8. You can see how both pathways converge on factor 10. Now, why was I raving on about thrombin? Well, because thrombin really helps to upscale and really increase the activity of the intrinsic pathway by majorly affecting how much factor 11 is converted to factor 11a and because more and more factor 11a can be converted uh, factor 11 can be converted to factor 11a the thrombin really helps to propel this whole pathway forward so you can see how the extrinsic pathway initially forms the thrombin the intrinsic pathway keeps it going Thrombin also helps to convert factor 13 to factor 13A, and this is such an important factor as it helps to form crosslinks within the fi uh, fibrin sheath formed. And this is what makes that fibrin sheath so strong, is because you've got crosslinks. So in summary, some kind of trauma kickstarts the extrinsic pathway, and this whole starts the clotting cascade. This includes factors 3 or tissue factor, as well as that factor 7. The intrinsic pathway keeps the cascade going and includes factors 11, uh, 12, 9, and 8. Now, I know the uh, intrinsic pathway can be very difficult to remember. You've got quite a few factors, um, but in general, you don't actually need to remember all of it because there's a very nice trick to work out what factor comes next. So all we really need to know about the intrinsic pathway is that no, it just starts with factor 12, right? And then whatever the last letter of that word is, is the beginning letter of the next factor. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's have a look. First, we have factor 12, right? 12 ends in an E. So the next factor in our sequence is going to start with an E, 11, okay? 11 ends in an N. So the next factor is going to start with an N, 9, okay? 9 ends in an E. 
9, therefore, is the next factor is going to start with the letter E. And the next factor that combines with 9 is 8. Okay. And then lastly, 8 ends in a T. And the next factor begins with a T. Well, the next factor is factor 10. So therefore, just knowing uh, what factor came before, we can work out what factor is going to come next in the intrinsic pathway just by knowing the last letter of that factor. That concludes the video. Hope you guys found it useful. Please feel free to share and subscribe. And if you have any comments, leave them below and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. See you in the next one.